Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's just after 11 a.m. Eastern time on Monday, August 12th. Coming on this morning to talk to you about potential Tropical Cyclone 5, a system we've been monitoring out over the tropical Atlantic that's racing westward quickly toward the Leeward Islands and is expected to become a tropical storm as it moves through the islands tonight and then be a tropical storm as it affects the, the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday and then uh, expected to become a powerful hurricane as it turns northward across the western Atlantic. But let's start off with what's going on this morning. Uh, the system right now doesn't have a well-defined center of circulation, so it's not yet a tropical depression, but but we are expecting it to uh, become a depression within the next 12 hours or so, and then a tropical storm within about 24 hours. The system is right now located about 435 miles to the east-southeast of Antigua. It's about 730 miles east-southeast of San Juan, Puerto Rico. It's moving very quickly toward the west at about 26 miles per hour right now. The maximum sustained winds are about 35 miles per hour. Um, as the system is organizing, you can start to see on the radar mosaic here from the Barbados Meteorological Service, you can see the shower and thunderstorm activity increasing to the east of the Leeward Islands and we'll start to see the rainfall rates and those rains that move into those islands uh, as soon as later today continue through tonight and then spread northwestward and as you know rain is one of the biggest hazards for tropical storms and hurricanes as they move across the Caribbean can contribute to the potential for flash flooding and mudslides and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute let's look at the forecast for now this is the forecast out through Thursday uh, we have the system again moving quickly westward with the center of the system moving through the Leeward Islands overnight tonight and early Tuesday, and then starting to turn northwestward as the forward motion slows down, and that'll take the center of the system across or near Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands Tuesday night into early Wednesday, and then expect a northward turn to the north of Puerto Rico with the system becoming a hurricane uh, by Thursday morning. And looking out at the longer range time frame, we're expecting a northward to northeastward motion that will take the system uh, in the have the system be in the vicinity of Bermuda by the time we get to early. Early Saturday as a uh, powerful hurricane and intensifying hurricane at that time. So uh, going to be a long duration event here. No direct threats to the U.S. East Coast, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute about the potential for surf and rip current danger that will develop later this week and into this weekend. So right now, if we take a closer look, we have tropical storm warnings in effect from Guadalupe northward across the northern Leeward Islands, including uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Bartholomew, and for the British Virgin Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Islands and Puerto Rico, including Culebra and Vieques. Everywhere in this area uh, needs to prepare for tropical storm conditions within the next 36 hours. And because the system is not terribly well organized right now, those tropical storm force winds, when they form, will extend quite a far away from the center. And the uh, track of the exact center could shift around a fair bit. So everybody in these areas needs to prepare for those tropical storm conditions. And in addition, uh, the arrival time of those tropical storm force winds in the northern Leeward Islands could be uh, early tomorrow morning. And and then spreading westward into the Virgin Islands by Tuesday evening and into Puerto Rico overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Longer time frame, uh, looking downstream to potential impacts in Bermuda, those could begin during the day on Friday. Uh, let's now talk about the rainfall. As I mentioned, rainfall is often the deadliest hazard with these systems in the Caribbean. We are expecting widespread rainfall totals of four to six inches across the Leeward Islands, including the Virgin Islands, and we could see three to six inches of rainfall with isolated amounts as high as 10 inches across portions of Puerto Rico. There is a considerable threat of flash flooding and mudslides across many of these islands. So uh, please pay attention to any products that are issued by your local meteorological service, any flood watches or warnings, and be on the lookout for that hazard. That will likely be the most impactful hazard we see from this system in the Caribbean. And just a reminder too, we have a flash flood watch in effect for all of Puerto Rico, Calebra, Vieques, and the U.S. Virgin Islands at this point, and that will continue for the next couple of days. Uh, in terms of storm surge, we are not expecting a, a huge storm surge, but we could see a peak surge of up to three feet above ground level in the U.S. Virgin Islands, in Calebra and Vieques, and in basically the eastern third of Puerto Rico, for east of Guay Guayama on the south coast, all the way up to uh, San Juan on the north coast. So again, the possibility for some coastal inundation of up to three feet above ground level there. Uh, okay, so let's just cover the last, uh, the main points here for potential tropical cyclone five. The system is expected to become a tropical storm as it reaches the Leeward Islands, and tropical storm warnings are in effect for those islands where folks need to be preparing for those tropical storm conditions. Again, heavy rainfall and, and local will result in locally considerable flash flooding and mudslides across portions of the Leeward Islands and the Virgin Islands by later today into Wednesday and over Puerto Rico late Tuesday into Thursday. And we do have tropical storm warnings now in effect for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as well. 
a reminder that we have Spanish translated products on hurricanes.gov. You can see the key messages here that are posted on hurricanes.gov. You can also see the public advisory translated into Spanish. So for our Spanish speaking users and customers, you can find all that information there. Uh, just a, a longer term reminder about the system as it turns northward as an intensifying hurricane, it's likely to create dangerous surf and rip current conditions across much of the Western Atlantic Basin, especially along the US East Coast beginning from Friday into this weekend. We'll have more information on that as we go throughout the week. So please stay tuned for more updates here. You can find the latest information at the National Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov. For users in, the, in Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands, you can find information from the National Weather Service office there at weather.gov. And we'll be back with more updates on this system throughout the week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.